Crew AI is an amazing tool that lets you use multiple AI agents in order to complete complex tasks. Now, that doesn't really mean anything if you don't start putting it to practical use. It's kind of like me giving you a toolbox and telling you, yeah, you can build houses with this, you can fix cars, you can start a business. Now, if you don't have any particular interest or use case for those tools, you're probably not going to do anything with them. So I think using Crew AI for, you know, just to start solving problems that you already had or things you've been curious about learning is going to be the best way for you to start using and learning more about this tool. So in my case, one of the things that I've always been kind of putting off for some time now is learning more traditional Mexican recipes. So what I'm going to do is show you how I build this crew for Crew AI in order to basically get a recipe book of traditional Mexican recipes. Now I know in previous videos I've kind of walked you through the setup after I've done it but I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this even if you don't want to deal with changing the code, even if you don't have any programming experience. Now if you already have your Crew AI template project set up, great, you can follow along right now. If this is the first time you've worked with Crew AI or you haven't installed or set up a project before, in the description I'm going to have a playlist which is going to let you follow through setting up from scratch even if you don't have any coding editor, even if you've never worked with Python, it's gonna take you from the beginning to this point here. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna keep the same format of the files that we have here. We have our main file, we have our agents file, and we have our tasks. Now if you go to the Crew AI website, here from the main page, we have this tab which says chat with our docs. So this takes you basically to a chat GPT page of a Crew AI assistant that I'm assuming the creator of Crew AI himself made. And we're just gonna start from scratch. I don't necessarily know what kind of agents I need. I don't necessarily know what these tasks are going to be so we're going to start that conversation about hey i want to create a crew of agents that will help me basically build a recipe book for traditional mexican recipe now after we ask it this it gives us some suggestions for the agents that we can use it gives us a research agent editor agent photography agent so i think this is more or less it's thinking that we want a physical recipe book we want to print this out but not so much i really just want the recipes i want them to be traditional ingredients i want them to be as authentic as possible so i don't really care right now for any pictures but i would want some very clear descriptions of the directions that i need to follow so let's so let's give it a little more context in that sense so here i basically told it that the main things i want is one an agent to pick the recipes for me i don't even want to deal with the research of it two i want an agent that will be able to figure out whether these recipes are authentic, you know, I want this person or this agent to verify that whatever recipes are being carried out are going to be authentic and not just some Tex-Mex version or some Americanized version of the recipe. Three, I want another agent that's going to be able to step by step clearly define those steps or the directions needed to make the recipe. And four, I want an agent that just solely focuses on formatting the recipes in a very readable, legible manner so that I can put it into a Notion document. So after we gave it that, as you can see here, it gives us a role, goal, backstory, and tools for each agent in a very legible, clear-cut manner. And this, again, this is already very similar to the format that we would see here in our code for our agents. But again, this is just to help us build it out from the start. So I'll only very briefly skim through this. I'm not gonna worry too much about these agent specifics. Right now, I'm really just trying to give it context for the project that we're building. So now that we have our agents pretty much defined, let's ask it about the tasks that we would need for this crew. So now that we asked it to start defining the tasks, again, from here it carries on, basically in the same format that it's gonna look in the code, the description and the expected output for each custom task. And again, just skimming through it, this looks pretty close to what we want. So now we can start beginning to copy and paste the code we have for our template. And from here on out, we're really just gonna ask ChatGPT to use the format of this code in order to make this new crew that we're asking for and to only use the tools that we already have installed or imported from our original program. So again, we're just gonna copy and paste all of our code for all of our project. Again, this is including your main.py, your task.py, your agents.py. And before we paste it, this is basically what we're asking ChatGPT. We're telling it that we're using this template project for our crew AI project, and we want it to only use the same imports and dependencies that are installed in this project. I don't know if you saw earlier in the chat, but it was suggesting using different tools that we haven't worked with, we haven't installed. Right now, we don't want to deal with that, so we wanted to keep it as close as possible to the project that we already have. And typically, ChatGPT is pretty good at giving you code 
but if you ask for a very long response that's usually when it starts messing up or it starts looking for shortcuts so we only wanted to start outputting the main.py file so here it's response was again only the main.py file and just kind of skimming over it i can see that it kept the same imports as before in this looks pretty similar it even has the writing to file that we did earlier and at the end of it it's asking if we want the agents.py or test.py file next so let's go ahead and do that right so it looks like it finished up with our agents.py file so again we're just going to ask it for a test.py before we start copying pasting it back to our project and start testing it out okay so it looks like it finished with our tasks.py file so now we can get started on taking this, copying it, and pasting it on our VS code. All right, so now that we've copied and pasted it, we can start trying to run this. Now I haven't done any troubleshooting at all, so if any, so if we get any errors, we run into any problems, I'll also be recording how you can go about resolving that. But first, once you copy and paste anything, make sure you save the files so that it will actually run the new version of the file that you have on your code editor. So we're gonna start our terminal new terminal and here if you see this symbol it says zsh it means you're not running on your poetry shell or you're not able to use python for your project yet so make sure you type poetry shell in order to be able to run the python commands so now you'll be able to run your python program and remember the command is just python main.py So I can already see that it's already working. And from the way it's running, it didn't even ask me for any input. So I guess the way it was built up by the code in ChatGPT was because the task was already very specific, which was asking for a recipe book of Mexican recipes. It's already starting to do that by default. It didn't even really ask me for input. Now, I guess if you want to do this in a way where maybe you wanted the crew to figure out based on the kind of ethnic recipes that you asked for, then you might want some input. but. From here, I can tell that it's just assuming that it's Mexican recipes on its own. Now you see a lot going on here, but the way that I can tell that this is actually working pretty efficiently is that just from reading this, I'm already getting kind of hungry. So our project finished running guys, and as you can see here, we're able to get, I believe it was about three recipes and I'm pretty happy with the results and also with the fact that it formatted it for it to be compatible with Notion. So all these stars you see, all these little headers on top of it that's to make it look nice on notion which is what i wanted at the end of the day we can even really just copy this and paste it to a notion doc and you get something like this so here we have it with our table of contents it only gave us two recipes but i think these are pretty pretty traditional recipes i'm not familiar with this chiles and nogada so it's probably from a different part of mexico that i haven't been to and i like how thorough it was with all the ingredients just from that i think that's definitely one of the main things when it comes to a traditional recipe you want to make sure you get the right ingredients the instructions i think it could definitely improve with better more clear probably longer instructions since i'm by no means any kind of chef but it did have some cooking time i don't think i specified on that and like i said i do like it a lot that we're able to get this in very nice very neat notion documentation and if we scroll up through the project guys we can see here this you maybe just look at the timestamp on my clock this ran on for quite a bit of time it was checking through multiple recipes and again these were all really conversations that the agents were having with one another in terms of verifying the recipe checking the ingredients trying to format it to notion now at the end of the day i think we could definitely fine tune this a little better in terms of the directions that we give it. But keep in mind, everything that we ran here, we literally just copy and pasted from ChatGPT. I didn't even really necessarily read what the directions, what the description for the roles were, or even the tasks. I just based it off trust from the original directions that I gave it. it. Definitely would benefit me or you to go into the descriptions of the roles and actually read them and write them out more clearly. But just for the sake of the video, I want to walk you through the process that I would go through if I was trying to make a crew project without any coding experience, if I didn't want to deal with things like GitHub version control. Now I know at the end of the day, it's probably not super effective to be copying and pasting code, but your goal is to learn how to use this technology so that you can better your life. And you're not necessarily trying to go into the tech field. You're not necessarily trying to become a developer or a computer scientist or a programmer. Then I think just showing you straight up the quickest way for you to do it so you can use these tools is the most efficient way so you can start getting benefit from it now. The other thing I did want to mention is keep in mind you're running this with your API key. Before I ran this query, I think it was uh yeah, I think it's like five dollars, almost six dollars. This cost me about 150. And again, each time these agents are talking to each other, 
It's pretty much using some of your credits that you have, what you paid for in your subscription. So just keep that in mind that you want to make sure that your agents and your tasks are defined as best as you can to the to the task that you want to accomplish. And if you need help writing them out, you can always use ChatGPT since you're already paying for it and that's not going to cost you. But anytime you run Korea AI, because it is using your API key, you are going to get a little bit of an upcharge. Now, I do have a limit of $10, so I could play with it as much as you want. Once I get to the $10 limit, it's just going to stop working. So again, as you test this out, just be mindful of these costs. If you're not paying attention to it, it could definitely add up. Thank you guys so much for watching. For upcoming videos, I want to focus on some of these other examples that are set up for Cree AI. So let me know in the comments, which one of these do you think I should make a walkthrough video or do you think I should just set up very quickly and build stuff with it? Which one of these are you most curious about? Which one of these do you think you'd benefit the most from learning? My goal is for these tutorials to be as easy to follow as possible so that even if you don't have any technology experience, you can still take advantage of these amazing tools. I'd love to hear what you plan on using Korea AI for, whether it's in your personal life, as a hobby or in your business. So let me know that in the comments too and I'll see you in the next one.